I'm honored to be here this morning in San Antonio to join you and my colleagues to talk about really the remarkable progress that's already been made in making unconventionals conventional and to talk about some of the challenges that we face collectively going forward. You know, just a few years ago, this, uh, this topic, uh, this title for a conference like this would have seemed uh, unrealistic or impossible or ridiculous. For decades, unconventional uh, was synonymous with uneconomic or marginal, out of reach or uncompetitive. But of course, all that's changed. In fact, shale gas, tide oil, and oil sands are not just becoming conventional in terms of their use, but they're rapidly becoming essential in terms of the way uh, the world's energy needs are going to be met. So this morning, I want to talk about the global need to develop unconventional sources of energy, where this could go internationally, and how we can build public confidence in our industry and establish sound public policies that are going to spur the further development of unconventional resources all over the globe. Well, let me begin with how unconventionals will factor into the fundamental demand for energy. If you look at any forecast of energy, you have to begin with a couple of fundamentals. One is the population. What's the world's population going to be that requires energy? Secondly, how the world's economy is going to grow? And then thirdly, how we're going to use energy most efficiently. So beginning first with, with population. By the year 2040, uh, we expect the global population will grow by more than 25% to 8.7 billion people. In addition, trade will create stronger ties between nations, further aiding and accelerating development. And when these factors are combined with the universal desire everyone has for higher standards of living, the global economy will more than double in size by the year 2040. With this global transformation will come a growing need for affordable and reliable sources of energy. By the year 2040, we expect that global energy demand will be about 30% higher than it is today. Now that 30% is less than the global growth in the population simply because we project that as a world and as the economies grow, we're all going to become more and more efficient in the way we use energy. Things like higher fuel efficiency in vehicles, uh, smart grids, lighter weight materials in our vehicles. If we don't do that, you can see the kind of demand that, uh, for energy that will be out there. So let's take a little closer look now at, at the North American energy supply and uh, demand balance. And by North America, if you'll permit me, I'm going to define that as Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. Bottom line, to meet these growing energy demands, we're going to need to develop all commercially viable energy sources. Even in North America, where we expect overall energy demand to be about flat, again, because of a lot of efficiencies that we're going to build into the way we use energy, uh, we're going to need wind, solar, nuclear, coal, and biofuels. But as you can see, we're also going to need uh, natural gas and oil. And because of their widespread availability, reliability, and flexibility, we're, we expect natural gas and oil to continue to shoulder about 60% of the load here in North America. Oil and natural gas from unconventional sources, such as shale gas, tide oil, and oil sands, can and they will, as I'll show you in a moment, be significant contributors to meeting our energy demand. More importantly, with the application of innovative technologies and sound operational practices, we're developing these new supplies of energies in ways that are safe, secure, and environmentally responsible. And these developments 
And some of the things that David talked about could not come at a more opportune moment. In North America, we project that conventional gas supplies will decline by about 50% from 2010 to 2040. To meet local demand, unconventional natural gas will need to grow about 140% over the same period, or 3% annually on average. With this projected growth, unconventional gas is expected to satisfy about three-fourths of North American demand by 2040. Of course, as you all know, natural gas offers a reliable, flexible, affordable, and efficient fuel. For future generations, this increase in natural gas also in, offers significant environmental benefits. Because, for example, when it comes to power generation, natural gas emits 50 to 60 percent less CO2 emissions and greenhouse gas emissions than, than coal in power generation. But the energy industry's investments in unconventionals and new technologies will also help us unlock new supplies of liquids, shown on the right. Over the next three decades, we forecast a decline in conventional crude oil production in Mexico, Canada, and the United States. However, this decline is going to be more than offset by rising production from tight oil and oil sands. Hydraulic fracturing, horizontal drilling, and completion technologies Will, are supporting and will continue to support tight oil development from the, from the Bakken, the Eagleford, um, Midland Basins, and the Cardium, and all throughout the Permian. Another set of innovations is helping our industry develop responsibly vast stores of, of uh, oil in the, in the Can Canadian Athabasca oil sands. In fact, the Curl Oil Sands Project a host of technologies are enabling us to develop that resource with about the same life cycle greenhouse gas emissions as many other crude oils that are refined in the United States. But I have to tell you, every time we update this outlook, that import wedge shrinks, and I expect that to continue to shrink. Of course, one of the ongoing challenges for our industry is communicating the positive impact our innovations are having on both the economy and the environment. The unconventional gas boom is helping reinvigorate entire industries in this country, including the petrochemical industry, which relies on gas to make plastics and the other building blocks of modern manufacturing. It strengthening America's steel industry which is building new mills and hiring workers as well to support shale gas drilling. In areas where shale gas and tide oil development are taking place are experiencing phenomenal economic growth, job creation, and increased tax revenues. And these are just a few of the examples of our industry from public sources uh, published over the last few years. But as impressive as these results are, we as an industry need to better communicate and reach out to the public and policymakers about our industry and these technologies. And we're going to have to continue to manage risk the way we always have, but uh, with an increased priority and premium at every stage of the unconventional development to enhance safety, efficiency, and the way we manage and we protect the environment. Effective business and risk management practices are helping our industry get better. The Barnett Shale is just one example of this. And the Barnett XTO, for example, has been able to maximize long-term ultimate recovery with longer lateral lengths and improve drilling and completion efficiency. So the graph on the left shows, uh, depicts more than 1,400 wells that XTO has drilled in the years 2005 through 2011. Looking at the data on the bottom half of the chart, you can see that drilling days from spud to rig release have been reduced by 
during the same period, measured depth of these wells increase by 14 percent. In the chart on the right, you can see the resulting sustained production outlook, even with the declining rig count. So as an industry, we are creating value through operational efficiencies, even as the wells we're drilling are becoming more complex to drill. So what are the prospects for this going global? As this map shows, uh, there is potential for substantial stores of unconventional resources literally all over the globe, in Europe, Latin America, Asia, and Australia. We're still in the very early days, but analysis from a number of public sources, including Cambridge Energy Research Associates, suggests that recoverable gas in the rest of the world could be four to 14 times what North America has discovered and developed. The future of unconventional development is going to depend on both government and industry, each fulfilling our respective roles. Only government can put in place the sound and stable po public policy frameworks that encourage competition, trade, and innovation. But in the, in the years ahead, our industry will have to do our part to develop unconventionals all over the globe. We're going to need to increase our fundamental technical understanding of potential plays around the globe. We're going to need to educate the public on the risks and how we're managing them. We can and we must produce new supplies of energy through unconventional development while protecting communities and the environment. We've got a proven track record on this. We need to build on it and communicate it. We'll also need to invest in new infrastructure, technologies, and projects to bring resources to market. And when we do, uh, we must do so with integrity in our operations, in how we communicate, and with flawless execution. And finally, our industry must continue to engage policymakers and regulators to ensure that public policies are sound, are stable, and that best practices spread, and they meet the intended benefits from, from which they were designed. Both government and industry have a special role to play. By fulfilling our roles, we can enable the investment and the innovation needed to unlock supplies of oil and gas, create jobs, and increase economic and progress literally all over the world. Thank you very much for your attention.